Hi, this is Nancy Buswell, and you are listening to the Listen and Repeat podcast, episode 113. This is To Build a Fire 12, and yes, this is the last one. We have finally, or we will finally finish this short story. Okay, so the last one, we'll see how this story ends, though I bet if you've been following the story, you already know how it ends. Okay, so this is based on a short story by Jack London. Listen and repeat to improve your English intonation and pronunciation. Copy how my voice goes up and down. Listen and repeat. And all the time the dog ran with him. At his heels. When he fell down a second time. It curled its tail over its forefeet and sat in front of him, facing him curiously eager and intent. The warmth and security of the animal angered him. And he cursed it till it flattened down its ears appeasingly. This time the shivering came more quickly upon the man. He was losing in his battle with the frost. It was creeping into his body from all sides. The thought of it drove him on, but he ran no more than a hundred feet. When he staggered and pitched headlong, it was his last panic. When he had recovered his breath and control, he sat up and entertained in his mind the conception of meeting death with dignity. However, the conception did not come to him in such terms. His idea of it was that he had been making a fool of himself. Running around like a chicken chicken with its head cut off. And that's an expression that we still use. Ah, you're running around like a chicken with its head cut off. You know, no, no order, no organization. You don't know what you're doing. Such was the simile that occurred to him. Well, he was bound to freeze anyway, and he might as well take it decently. With this newfound peace of mind, came the first glimmerings of drowsiness. To feel sleepy. And those dogs, I tell you what, I'm I'm staying, I'm recording this when I'm on vacation in Vientiane, Laos, and we're a little outside of the capital, and there's just lots of dogs around here. I try to record when when no one's having a party or playing music outside, but uh, nothing I can do about these dogs. I really like where I'm staying, but uh, sometimes there's some music late at night from the neighbors and, uh, of course, dogs everywhere. Uh, Okay, where are we? Uh, Good, I uh, knew. 
Okay, drowsiness. Drowsiness means to feel sleepy. Yeah, so if you've been listening to this for the last several podcasts or YouTube, this is also a YouTube video, uh, you'll hear the dogs. Sorry, um, it's quiet when I start and then there they go. Okay, let me go on. A good idea, he thought, to sleep off to death. It was like taking an anesthetic. Anesthetic. Freezing was not so bad as people thought. There were lots worse ways to die. He pictured the boys finding his body next day. Suddenly he found himself with them, coming along the trail and looking for himself. And still with them, he came around a turn in the trail and found himself lying in the snow. He did not belong with himself anymore. For even then, he was out of himself. Standing with the boys and looking at himself in the snow. It certainly was cold, was his thought. When he got back to the States, United States, yeah, people who are outside of the United States often just call it the States. So he's in Canada, uh, Northwestern Canada. He could tell the folks what real cold was. He drifted on from this to a vision of the old timer on Sulphur Creek. He could see him quite clearly, warm and comfortable. And smoking a pipe. You were right, old Haas, you were right. I'm not sure what Haas means. Maybe it's horse. Anyhow, old Haas, yeah, sometimes long ago they used that, like in the cowboys, or obviously here, the, the um, I think they're gold miners up in the Yukon. Uh, we don't use Haas anymore. The man mumbled to the old timer of Sulphur Creek. Then the man drowsed off into what seemed to him the most comfortable and satisfying sleep he had ever known. The dog sat facing him and waiting. The brief day drew to a close in a long, slow twilight. There were no signs of a fire to be made. And besides, never in the dog's experience had it known a man to sit like that in the snow and make no fire. As the twilight drew, I'm sorry, as the twilight drew on, its eager yearning for the fire mastered it. And with a great lifting and shifting of forefeet, it whined softly. Why? 
whined is a kind of a crying sound, then flattened its ears down in anticipation of being chidden by the man. Chidden is the past tense of chide. Both of those are extremely uncommon. I've never seen chidden before in the life, in, in my life. I would, I would say scolded, scolded by the man or criticized by the man. But the man remained silent. Later, the dog whined loudly. And still later, it crept close to the man and caught the scent of death. This made the animal bristle and back away. A little longer it delayed, howling under the stars that leapt, I'm sorry, howling under the stars that leaped and danced and shone brightly in the cold sky. Then it turned and trotted up the trail in the direction of the camp it knew. Where there were other food providers and fire providers. And that's the end of the story. It's a classic man versus nature, man against nature story. And in this case, nature won. A bit sad, but it's interesting, you know, how he writes about the, the fight against the, the very, very bitter cold. Okay, so that's the end of the short story by Jack London called To Build a Fire. I hope you found it useful. And I hope you have a good day.